Bonsoir à tout le monde. Et je remercie Hans euh, qui est venu justement de Belgique pour nous raconter euh, de son travail. My biography is of, is of no importance. So I try to put all my energy and focus in the work, but my life in general is very steady and boring. I try to stage things in my work that give a form of consolation. Because of course, regardless of the fact that I was just joking, um, life is not so easy. It is uh, ups and downs. And it is of course also for all of us dealing with mortality and dealing with a finite life and dealing with, as Kundera says, the uh, unbearable lightness of being. Uh, from a reflective distance, um, life is um, interchangeable. It's uh, extremely light, and the duration of our lives is extremely short. And so we have all this need to find an identity, to find a reason uh, to give a certain value to our lives. And, um, what I always, as a spectator, hope to find in a, in a piece of visual art is a form of consolation, a form of comforting. Um, it is the old principle of the catharsis uh, from the Greek tragedy. It's like going to a film and leaving the darkness or the obscurity of the cinema space and entering the world again with other eyes than the eyes you had before. And that to me is very important, that for a moment you found something else within this fiction that is the visual art. And especially in my case, I think I'm one of those figurative artists, so to say. My work is very figurative. It, um, it shows fictional scenes and scenery. And uh, therefore, it is false, it's ridiculous, it's a construction. But my invitation as a visual artist to you is that my fiction is a proposition to you. And if you accept it, you can enjoy it. At that, at that moment, the fiction becomes something authentic. Something fake becomes something authentic. So I think as a spectator or as an artist, you always have this kind of reflective distance. And if we look at ourselves as human beings, there's always something tragicomical about us. You know, when you take a certain distance, uh, for example, imagine that someone from Mars would uh, come to Earth and look at a merry-go-round. Probably this person would go like, what are you doing? You know, you put your kids on fake horses that go in circles, you know. It's something incredibly ridiculous about that. But we do that as human beings, don't we? We stage these kind of constructions and we want these objects to perform something like amusement or entertainment to us. And, uh, but when you isolate such a uh, kitsch object from its context, when you abstract it, meaning that you isolate something from a broader whole, uh, it becomes something strange and alienating. It becomes like a... a a stage, something pointless also, <laughs> you know. So when this video is projected life-sized, it's like a monster, you know, it's a kitsch monster in all these kind of weird colors and weird aesthetics. And this is something I want to point out as a, a visual uh, figurative artist, is to isolate elements from daily life and to show the strange um, aspects of it somehow not as a judgment, but rather as something particular that I like to, um, to show. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, and uh, for me, the medium itself, it's not so important. The thing which is important is that I use a medium as an adequate means to express something. And this says a lot about my work. My work is really mood-driven, meaning that my work is really about uh, a general mood, something that takes you, that lifts you, that, that, that carries you to another zone or to another space. Um, it's not so much about literal narration or it's not so much about plot. It's always about an invitation, an image 
that invites you to experience something, to experience something as vague as a mood or a set, uh, a mindset. Then in 2004, I had my first uh, uh, big museum show. This is a construction of 12 by 24 meters. So it gives an impression of the ridiculous scale of the, of the construction. And this deserted highway is a trompe l'oeil construction. So it's, uh, it seems to be much deeper than it factually is. You sit in the installation and you look through the window, it really feels like kilometers of, of profundity, of depth. So all the tables and the, the seats uh, are handcrafted. It has the advantage that you can really give your own signature to it. And fortunately this work now became a permanent installation in Japan at the Towada Art Center. So it has its own little building and it's really absurd because it's a non-functional nonsense space, you know. It's, it doesn't make any sense. You, can't even get a coffee there, so it's just a, it's just a non-functional space. And the nice thing about it is that later on, people who had seen the installation said like, you know what, I was driving yesterday night and I found myself in this motorway down there and I was thinking so much about your work. But this is really something nice, you know, when you make figurative work, you kind of ask attention for things that people normally don't pay that much uh, attention to. When you drive on the highway many times, on the bridges that, that bridge the highway, you always have these people that are leaning on the bridge, right? So they're seated on their bike and they, they're just they're gazing at the cars. For God's sake, it's really not beautiful, is it? You know, cars. And I think maybe it's the kind of contemporary equivalent to gazing at the sea, you know? It's always the same, but it's always in movement. Maybe it's a, a form of meditation, I don't know. So. Maybe it's not that ridiculous. When I was a student at the Rijks Academy in Amsterdam, I produced this work. So you walk in this dark room in the museum space, and your eyes get used to the dark, and you start to gradually see more and more details of the trees and the frozen ditches and so on and so forth. And you can walk around it, and the only thing that happens, it's like an entire non-event. I invite you to look at a non-event. There's no story, there's no characters, nothing spectacular. It's like an anti-spectacular image. And the only thing that steadily goes on is the, the lights that are changing all the time. And what was very encouraging to me as an artist is the fact that when I showed this work for the first time, that people stayed in for a very long time. And that people felt that I wanted to ask them, that I invited them, as a matter of fact, to absorb this nocturnal mood of this setting. Nothing more and nothing less. This is a video I made in a supermarket, and this is just a video that somehow shows you, you know, the, the, the poor, mathematized, structurized uh, world of uh, consumption, you know. It's, uh, these very sad still lives of plastic bags and keys and chewing gum. And these are the guardians that are, you know, guarding the, the line between what's been offered and what's yours. So the whole day they, they see the whole society passing by at their little booth. But it's a very boring, <laughs> boring video, as you see, it's free. But I think it's very recognizable and universal as well, you know. This is what we do as human beings. But so when you isolate it from your daily activity and when you look at it, you go like, yeah, that's pretty sad, isn't that, you know, as a scenery. The same goes a bit for hospital buildings, you know. The most important things in our lives, they all happen in hospitals. The hospital building, on floor one, people are born, on floor seven, people die, and on, on the other floors, people get uh, um, cured and... Uh, I all of a sudden realized that the hospital building as a setting or as a stage is, uh, of course, it's, it's never a nice building, is it? You know, it's all very mathematically uh, divided in rooms and system walls and ceilings and, and all that. The most important things seem to happen in the hospital building as a setting. Well, I invented a fictional hospital as the first video I produced with uh, digital renders. So when you watch this film, you, as a spectator, navigate through depopulated spaces. There's no one there, only a patient here and there. It's like you are walking through this fiction. And uh, the, it's, it's, it's done in Maya. It's a very difficult program on the computer, but it allows you to create fake uh, uh, visual fiction um, with a photographic realism. So it really feels like a real space when you watch the film. Then I started to make watercolor paintings, small watercolor paintings, 
I have some watercolor paintings there on the wall. Uh, so I paint them mostly in black and white. And the white that you see is the white of the paper. For people who are familiar with uh, watercolor, it's a technique that uh, is very nice to use when you want to have this kind of uh, clair-obscure uh, uh, light in, uh, in your paintings. And I kind of like to make black and white watercolors because they really, um, they're very evocative, I think. They, uh, the light or the way you can treat light in watercolor is quite magical. As a, as a means to, uh, to make something fictional. So I made all these kind of uh, watercolor paintings that relate to the body and how it is part of an enormous maze uh, or an enormous network of computers, uh, wires, uh, buildings. Uh, it's really, all these images are based upon things I found through Google on the internet. And uh, it's a really a, a series I produced on a, a kind of uh, free association, you could say. So I was really going from one drawing to the other, and it's all about how we live, how we stage, how we conceive labor and leisure, and um, it has to do with a lot of uh, uh, subjects from, uh, from nowadays. And then I also made an animated film, and like a, a, yeah, a kind of basso continuo through the film is this little boy that is laying on his back and he's just calmly breathing. And then you have all kinds of images that appear around him all the time. It's a film which is called Extensions. And then I started to think about how, we, how our paradigm of the world guides us and how we have to read and structure and understand the world and how we uh, produce and, uh, things. And I, by, by association, I ended up uh, making sculptures like a kind of Wunderkammers, uh, associations of objects that derive from very different uh, contexts. And then I started to continue because I made a lot of work on the big public space, you know, on supermarkets, uh, motorways, on uh, cityscapes, on the metropolitan context. And I thought, well, why not focus for a while on the domestic uh, setting? And then I made this table, and this table is produced on scale one and a half. So it's not a gigantic uh, class Oldenburg blow-up, it's like a dis slightly disturbing scale. When you see the, the table standing from far away, it looks more or less life-sized. But when you approach the table, I will show you, these are two adults, you shrink to the proportion of a six-year-old. And um, this work is always presented in a space with diffuse light that comes from the ceiling. So when you enter this space, it's a very strange experience because there's hardly any shadows, you see? There's hardly any shadows. It's because the light is extremely diffused and it comes from, from the top. And this to me is important because the whole sculptural piece, also the cloth, it's really hard, it's rock hard. So it's all sculpted in polyesters and wood and metal uh, and plaster. Uh, the thing to me which is important is the fact that the table and the chairs are almost immaterial. When you enter the space, they, it's as if it's not there. The only thing which, which is explicitly there are the ephemeral goods, are the food, the leftovers of cake and coffee and the cups and the cigarettes. Uh, and so what you read from the leftovers of lipstick and cigarettes, you know where the, you know, it's like a war zone of a gathering, you know. The people are gone and then you find a table and you understand where the smokers were seated and where the ladies were seated and, and all that. So you read the information in between the lines of, of the object. Okay, this was uh, uh, far too long, I'm sorry. Uh, I will project uh, staging silence too. And I hope this film invites you to experience something ridiculous and both serious at the same time.